I'm Jay Horton. I make movies that make money. Sometimes. This is how. If there's one thing that I really wish more filmmakers could wrap their heads around about distribution, it's that distributors are not magic. <laughs> Sales agents are not magic. Aggregators or marketplace like FilmHub are not magic. None of them are guarantors of the success or failure of your film. Believe it or not, at the end of the day, the major things that decide a film's financial success or failure have little to do with the actual method of distribution or who you choose to release it. Now, I'm not saying which distributor you go with doesn't matter at all. No, I'm not saying that. It's just not nearly as big a factor as some might think. To my way of thinking, the three major factors that really matter when it comes to picking a distribution method for low budget movies under $50,000 are number one, how good or bad the movie is, number two, how marketable the movie is, number three, how good you or the team you have in place are at marketing the film. This is not the law, there are exceptions. But by and large, until your budgets start getting over that $50,000 budget range, the distributors that take these smaller films, they're all pretty much the same in terms of reach and how they market the films. Sure, there are some differences and some advantages to one over the other depending on what type of movie you are making, but when it comes right down to it, they all deliver to the same platforms. Those same platforms all pay them the same rates, meaning for the most part, there are no special deals. And any distributor that claims to be getting a special rate for Amazon, Tubi, etc., they're most likely fibbing. Now sure, there are at the higher level deals that are being made for studios or production companies with very high and profitable output. That very well may be. But for the most part, they pay out the same to everyone. Regardless of who you choose to release your movie, it's gonna earn the same amount of money on Tubi. It's gonna earn the same amount of money on Amazon. It's gonna earn the same amount of money on Hoopla, Plex, Hulu, Netflix, whoever takes it. And sure, individual license amounts can vary from movie to movie and platform to platform, but that amount will most likely have nothing to do with the distributor providing the movie and everything to do with the movie itself. One quick thing to note, there are a few distributors out there that actually excel at marketing certain types of films and getting the movies in front of the right platforms for those types of films. The downside to all this is that the marketing is going to cost you. And most of the time, I'd say most times, it is not worth the cost for the movies with budgets south of $50,000. And it's with these additional fees that most predatory distributors will get you. That said, there are legit smaller distributors out there that really do help with marketing and they charge accordingly. But the catch here is the better companies at this level, they're pretty selective. And to the best of my knowledge, they don't typically pick up movies they don't think will earn over that amount. And in spite of what I just said, I feel like most of these mini major distributors don't really do that much that you can't do on your own and without having to give up any sales or marketing costs on the back end. And this is where most independent filmmakers get it twisted because they don't want to do their own marketing. They just want to give the movie over to a distributor and be done with it. That's what they want to do. But even these superior distributors will tell you that even with their help, a major component of their marketing strategies usually involve direct and constant involvement from the filmmaker. Here's something that I wish just filmmakers would get through their heads. Regardless of who takes your movie, you will have to market it. A lot of distributors will boast about their ability to get press, and some are very legit in those claims. But here's the thing about that. There was a time when the marketing and placement that some of these mini majors did was very unique and was very hard, if not impossible, to do without them. It was a time when filmmakers didn't have the ability to reach their own PR people or press, or 
it was limited. A time when you couldn't find an ace graphic designer to do a killer theatrical level poster on Fiverr for a few hundred dollars. It was a time when distributors regularly made big ticket sales to foreign territory after foreign territory. A time where distributors had great access to a myriad of physical sales outlets. But those times are gone for the most part. The proliferation of global streaming platforms has changed everything. Sure, there are still outliers and certain projects that still do make out very well with physical media, that still do get decent foreign sales. And if your project is one that might be a good fit for certain foreign territories or physical media sales, it might behoove you to go with a distributor who has a strong physical media option or foreign sales. But, by and large, for most smaller indie films, and again, we're talking about sub $50,000 here, you're going to make about 85% or more, most likely more, of your revenue from streaming. And all of these distributors are releasing on the same damn platforms, making the same damn money. If you got a horror movie and you're released with Uncorked, you're gonna be in the same places you would be if you went with Vision Films and had a family movie. You'd be in the same place with Indie Rights as you would with Film Hub or whatever. And sure, there are certain places that maybe Vision has a lock on that maybe Uncorked doesn't or vice versa or Indie Rights does that Vision doesn't and so on and so forth. And if there is a certain platform that one has access to that is just perfect for your film that the others might not, then that might be the best fit for you. But again, by and large, they're all getting to the same places. They're all making the same money. Speaking of which, I've heard some filmmakers lately kind of bagging on, you know, some distributors that have, you know, very large libraries and their average, you know, sales. But look, of course a distributor that takes less films and that curates more is going to have higher averages than one that takes more films and curates less. But it still has nothing to do with what your individual movie is going to make. Now, some will say, but what about TV deals? What about cable deals? What about single larger licensing deals for like Netflix or Hulu? And to that, I will say this. If you made a movie for $50,000 or less, the odds of you being on any of those outlets is slim, regardless of what distributor is submitting your movie. Unless your movie is just next level excellent or you get really lucky, you're just not going to get on those platforms. And yes, I know. There are ones that get through. There are exceptions. There are tiny movies that get there. And there are certain distributors that are more likely to get these deals. But again, by and large, it's just not a real option for ultra low budget films. In all likelihood, if you make a movie for less than $50,000, you'll be landing on the exact same platforms, earning the exact same rates as everyone else regardless of who your distributor is. So to my way of thinking, the only differences in distributors that really matter to movies at these budget levels are how much back end do they take, what kind of fees do they tack on after that, and most importantly, can they be trusted? What is their reputation? So if that's all true, who's the best fit for movies under 50,000? ones with the lowest back ends and sales costs. And more importantly, the ones that aren't gonna rip you off. This is why, time and time again, I place movies with indie rights and film hub. And I've heard other filmmakers, very wrongly, say that you should only go with these companies as a last resort. I say, bull the movie is going to perform on these platforms the same regardless of who puts it out. And unless your movie is one that's just going to blow up with physical sales or is by some miracle good or lucky enough to be picked up by a Netflix or a Hulu or a major TV or cable network, it'll make the same too. Now, this wasn't always so. As little as five years ago, we were in a totally different distribution landscape. And that's the problem. You still have many filmmakers that believe that's how it still is. Filmmakers that are literally partying like it was 1999. Or more accurately, partying like it's still 2010. 
so many independent films that came out between 2008 and like 2014 were just cleaning up in places like Redbox and Walmart and video store chains and in foreign sales. In 2010, you could fairly easily distribute a twenty dollars to $50,000 film, throw a B or C level star in it, and double your investment in the first year, sometimes more. I directed a bunch of movies in that time period that did it many times, but those kind of deals are pretty much gone. And the ones that are there are getting harder and harder to come by, and they're just not paying what they once were. Things in independent film distribution are changing fast. Major changes are hitting us on an almost daily basis. With so much change happening so fast, it's foolish to hold on to these old methods just because they used to work. But regardless of whether you listen to me here or do something different, know this. The independent film distribution landscape is rough. A low percent of lower budgeted indie movies are making any kind of profit at all. A YouTube channel called Movie Marketing Makeover recently did a wonderful video where they broke down some mean earnings from over 1,500 low budget independent films. And I can tell you, having seen numbers from about the same amount of films, his stats are pretty accurate. So check out the video to see what some of those averages are and what are some of the better performing genres. Just let him know in the comments that you found his video through my channel. But whatever you do, keep making movies.